of yet another partial government shutdown, triggered by an impasse on Capitol Hill that could now stretch into the new year. President Trump tweeting today that he's, quote, all alone in the White House, waiting for Democrats to come back with a budget deal. ABC's White House correspondent Tara Palmieri has more. Tonight, President Trump posting an image at work in the Oval Office, but still stewing about the shutdown on Christmas Eve. Tweeting, I'm all alone, poor me in the White House, waiting for the Democrats to come back and make a deal on desperately needed border security. The battle over the president's border wall will likely drag the shutdown past New Year's. This is what Washington looks like when you have a president who refuses to sort of go along to get along. President Trump adding to the confusion with another tweet about where the money will come from. The complete wall will be built with shutdown money plus funds already in hand. But congressional approval is required to reallocate any funds. Today, Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer saying that Trump is, quote, plunging the country into chaos. President Trump has been on a destructive two-week temper tantrum, demanding the American taxpayer pony up for an expensive and ineffective border wall. The White House has backed off its demand for $5 billion in border funding, but Schumer and the Democrats won't budge above $1.3 billion. This is about politics. It's about hating Trump, and it's not about America. Tonight, President Trump also fighting a battle against one of his exiled generals, Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis, after moving his exit date up to January 1st. He's now directly attacking Mattis for favoring subsidies for foreign militaries, tweeting, General Mattis did not see this as a problem. I do, and it's being fixed. Mattis resigned in response to the president's call to pull all troops from Syria in the fight against ISIS. Now we've won. It's time to come back. Mattis writing a scathing resignation letter saying, quote, we cannot protect our interests without maintaining strong alliances. The president praised Mattis at first, but sources tell ABC News he grew more angry after sharp criticisms from his own party, criticisms that persist. I'm devastated by this, and I think that what Mattis did was very important for our country. Washington and the eerie quiet in the halls of Congress with the partial government shutdown now in its eighth day. Visitors were lining up this weekend at the Smithsonian, which will close its doors on January 2nd if there is no resolution. As some 380,000 federal employees are out of work and more than 400,000 are being asked to work without pay, the president and Democratic leaders are still far apart, and there is no resolution in sight. Here's ABC White House correspondent Tara Palmieri. Tonight, on day eight of the government shutdown, with no end in sight, negotiations at a standstill. The president tweeting, I'm in the White House waiting for the Democrats to come on over and make a deal on border security. We're in this for the long haul. With Congress out of town, 800,000 federal employees either working without pay or furloughed are bracing for the worst. New mom Angela Cabana says her husband is among the 53,000 TSA employees at work with no paycheck. He's the sole breadwinner and uh, we've got two young kids and it's pretty scary not knowing when you're gonna get paid. Now she's battling with her credit card company to defer her payments. Our income has gone to zero, so I can't pay anything now. Tourists feeling the shutdown too. The Smithsonian museums are set to close on January 2nd and national parks are seeing massive trash pileups and maintenance issues. I am proud to shut down the government for border security. The showdown is over funding for the president's wall on the southern border where Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen has been examining detention centers. This is her motorcade in El Paso, Texas. Her visit has been closed to the press. A filing published by the Arizona Republic paints a grim picture inside those centers where two children have died in the past month. One filing from August 2018 stated, quote, the children would vomit on their clothing and the officials would not give us new clothing. There was never enough soap to wash anything. Another said, quote, my daughter was sick the whole time. She kept vomiting. I told an official that she was sick and he said, why did you come from your country? They did not bring a doctor or any medicine. Tonight, the president blaming the Democrats for the deaths of those migrant children, tweeting, their pathetic immigration policies that allow people to make the long trek thinking they can enter our country illegally. They can't. If we had a wall, they wouldn't even try. Thank you. Now to the police officer from California gunned down during a traffic stop on Christmas night. Officials say his suspected killer was trying to escape back to Mexico 
and getting help from family and friends along the way. At least seven people are now charged with helping him evade authorities, and more arrests might be coming. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. Tonight, two more suspects behind bars accused of helping this alleged cop killer evade police. Authorities in California finally finding Gustavo Perez Ariaga more than two days after he allegedly gunned down Newman Police Corporal Ranil Singh during a DUI traffic stop, killing the beloved officer just hours after his wife posted this photo to Facebook of their family celebrating Christmas. The suspect surrendering 200 miles away in Bakersfield and taken to jail on his 32nd birthday wearing Corporal Singh's handcuffs. I was waiting for this to happen. I'd like to thank you for him day and night. Police say in all, seven people are in custody, accused of assisting the suspect in evading police, including two of Ariaga's brothers and his girlfriend. Authorities telling ABC News all of them, as well as Ariaga, are in the U.S. illegally. This is a criminal illegal alien with prior criminal activity that should have been reported to ICE. Authorities say Ariaga had gang affiliations and two prior arrests for DUI, as well as an open DUI warrant out for his arrest. Investigators say California's sanctuary laws kept law enforcement from reporting him to immigration officials. When you tie our, our hands and don't allow us to communicate with our federal partners about people that commit crimes and who are in this country illegally, we're going to have incidents like this. Corporal Singh's wife, infant son, and canine partner Sam joining a crowd of thousands gathering by candlelight to bring the focus back to Singh's life of service. He loved his friends. He loved his family. He loved this community. He loved this country. And he loved his job. And tonight, law enforcement officials tell us more arrests are still possible.